A 12-year-old Idaho boy remembers nothing about the lightning strike that almost took his life Wednesday night. On the afternoon of Wednesday, September 30th, 1998, just two years ago last week, a Little League football team in Income, Idaho was out on the field for its midweek practice. They had completed their warm-ups and were starting to run a few plays from scrimmage. Dark clouds were gathering, as they sometimes do in the fall, and it began to rain lightly. But that was of no concern to a group of boys who loved playing football. Suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere an absolutely deafening crack of thunder split the air inseparable from the flash of lightning that illuminated literally electrified the entire scene at that very moment a young friend of mine A.J. Edwards then a deacon in the Port Neff ward of the McCammon Idaho stake was ready for the ball on a handoff that was sure to be a touchdown in this little inter-squad bit of horseplay. But the lightning that had illuminated earth and sky struck A.J. Edwards from the crown of his football helmet to the soles of his shoes. The impact of the strike stunned all the players, knocking a few to the ground, leaving one player temporarily without his sight, and virtually all the rest of the players dazed and shaken. Instinctively, they started running for the concrete pavilion adjacent to the park. Some of the boys began to cry. Many of them fell to their knees and began to pray. Through it all, A.J. Edwards lay motionless on the field. Carla Edwards had just left her son's football practice when she saw the lightning bolt and heard the thunder. She turned the car around to find out if he was okay. When I got there, all the kids were over under the pavilion, and A.J. was laying in the middle of the field with the coaches bending over him. It stopped his heart, stopped his breathing. He instantly collapsed and died on the field. A.J.'s coaches started CPR as his mother watched. Brother David Johnson of the Rapid Creek Ward, McCammon, Idaho Stake, rushed to the player's side. He shouted to coach and fellow ward member Rex Schaefer, I can't get a pulse. He's in cardiac arrest. These two men, rather miraculously both emergency medical technicians, started a life against death effort in CPR. He was laying in the middle of the field and, and two men were bent over him. And as I walked up, Rex Schaefer said, there's not a pulse. And I said, let's start CPR. So he and Dave Johnson started CPR. Cradling A.J.'s head as the men worked was the young defensive coach of the team, 18-year-old Bryce Reynolds, a member of the Mountain View Ward, McCammon, Idaho State. As he watched Brother Johnson and Brother Schaefer urgently applying CPR, he had an impression. I am confident it was a revelation from heaven in every sense of the word. He remembered vividly a priesthood blessing that the bishop had once given his grandfather following an equally tragic and equally life-threatening accident years earlier. Now, as he held this young deacon in his arms, he realized that for the first time in his life, he needed to use his newly conferred Melchizedek priesthood in a similar way. In anticipation of his 19th birthday and forthcoming call to serve a mission, young Bryce Reynolds had been ordained an elder just 39 days earlier. Whether he audibly spoke the words or only uttered them under his breath, Elder Reynolds said, A.J. Edwards, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power and authority of the Melchizedek priesthood which I hold, I bless you that you will be okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. As Bryce Reynolds closed that brief but fervent blessing offered in the language of an 18-year-old, A.J. Edwards drew his first renewed breath.
Bryce Reynolds, A.J.'s assistant coach, said a prayer for A.J. It in essence right there on the field and commanded A.J. to move. And, and after he closed the prayer, A.J. took his first breath. When he started to breathe, there was a cheer that went up. Everyone was cheering. And I remember there was a lot of patting on the back. But A.J. was still in grave danger. At the hospital in Bannock County, uh, the doctor said uh, it looked grim. In fact, we didn't know if he'd survive the night. A.J. was flown to the University of Utah burn unit. He doesn't remember what happened, but the lightning has left obvious scars. Went through his home, and he's got big burn marks on the side of his head where it hit, come down his... You can see the burn marks coming right down his neck, and then it kind of dissipated, and it went out of his shoulder, and you can see big burn marks coming down his shoulder, and then it went in, it, it separated, and he's got burn marks that come down through his chest. The ongoing prayers, miracles, additional priesthood blessings of that entire experience, including a high-speed ambulance drive to Pocatello and a near-hopeless life flight to the Burns Center at the University of Utah. It is sufficient to say that a very healthy and very robust A.J. Edwards is in the audience tonight with his father as my special guests. I also recently talked on the telephone with Elder Bryce Reynolds, who has been serving faithfully in the Texas Dallas mission for the past 17 months. I love these two wonderful young men. We would go for every 15 minutes with new information. And the information came so quickly. And they would, they would say, well, with this kind of injury, we expect this to happen. And then that wouldn't happen. Instead, something good would happen. And that just continued throughout the whole day. When this little boy made his way to Utah on the Life Flight helicopter. So did the hopes and prayers of an entire community. Well, we attribute his uh, survival to the uh, and uh, the concerns from the public that have prayed for him. It's so hard to go through something like this without the support of this community, and that is what has pulled us through. They have been our strength in helping us to get through this, and I just thank them from the bottom of my heart. We are truly grateful. Since he arrived, hundreds have called or sent cards to wish him well. AJ's football team even autographed the ball he was carrying when the lightning bolt struck. Thank someone for giving it giving you back your child. Um. The lightning struck AJ through the helmet, burning the padding. It continued down through his shoulder and then branched out. It also spread through his chest. Luckily, though, A.J. appears to have suffered no brain damage. He can do simple math problems, and he's beginning to talk. Whenever I say, A.J., I love you, and he'll say, I love you too, Mom. For some reason, God gave me more time with, with A.J to be with him more and I feel like that's a great privilege and a great responsibility.